In this video, we will learn how to edit and format a page using WordPress 3.9. Make sure to subscribe to Hello2WP for up-to-date video tutorials using WordPress. Once you've logged into your WordPress backend and clicked the page you want to edit, you'll see a white box in the middle of the page. This is your content box where you can add and edit text. Above the content box is a toolbar that allows you to format your text, including options much like the basic functions of Microsoft Word. Let's explore some of the formatting tools in the toolbar. Near the middle of the toolbar is a button called the toolbar toggle. It looks like it has a bunch of little buttons on it. When you click that, you'll see a second row of toolbar buttons appear allowing you even more formatting options for your content. WordPress likes to be sure that you have all the tools you need to make sure your content looks great. Starting from the left of the top row of your toolbar, you have a button with a B in it to bold text. To bold your text, type text in the content box highlight it, and click that button. Highlighting and then clicking the formatting button is how you will utilize most of the buttons in the toolbar. The next button has the letter I, which will italicize your text. The button with the ABC and a line through it is a strike through button. The next button with the three dots and three lines will allow you to create a bullet list. There are indentation buttons so you can add multiple levels to your bullet list. To do this, place your cursor on one of the lines in the bulleted list and click whether you want to increase or decrease an indent. As you finish adding new items to your bullet list and want to return to writing a paragraph, hit return or enter repeatedly until the bullet goes away. For a first level indentation, you would hit it twice. A numbered list works the same way as bullets, but instead uses numbers. As you indent the numbered items, the numbers will update automatically. The next button over is a pair of quotes, which is called a block quote. This is useful for highlighting an important part of your page, such as testimonials. The button with a single line will create a horizontal line, which can be used to break up your content into different sections. Next are your three alignment buttons used to position text or photos. You can align left, align center, and align right. The button that looks like a chain link is used for creating and editing links within your website. It will be grayed out until you type the text you want people to click on and then highlight that text. Once you highlight your text, you can click the chain link button and a window will appear where you can enter the URL of the page or website you would like to link to. You can link to internal pages as well as external websites. The title will be what people see when you hover your mouse over the link. The checkbox to open a link in a new window or tab will open the website you are linking to in a new tab within the user's browser. It is considered best practice to open a new window or tab if you are linking to a site that is not your own. Please note that from this new tab, they will not be able to click back to get back to your website. Have no fear, the tab with your website and it will remain open as well. To edit an existing link, place your cursor within the linked text and click the chain link button. To remove the link, place your cursor within the linked text and click the broken chain link button. The next button is the read more tag. The read more tag is applicable to blog posts which are added under the post tab in the WordPress administration menu. Jumping to the second line of the toolbar, there is a drop down that allows you to style your text as paragraphs or headings. The paragraph option is selected by default. The Pre option allows you to create pre-formatted text which will turn the text into monospaced font and exactly reproduce anything that is inside of it. The address is for defining contact information. The heading options should not be used to make text larger or smaller, but to display the importance of different elements of your page. 
This can be utilized as basic search engine optimization. The page title is already set to Heading 1. You only want a single Heading 1 for each page in most cases. Heading 2 can be used to designate different sections or subtopics related to what your page is about. Heading 3 can be used to break up sections of Heading 2. And so on and so forth until you get to Heading 6. For most of the content you write, you will not need to venture beyond Heading 3. The next button is a U which allows you to underline your text. The button with four lines of equal width is the Justify button. Justify ensures that your text is even on both the left and right columns. The A with a line under it and a drop down allows you to change the color of your text. Highlight the text you want to edit and select the color you want from the drop down. The clipboard with the T allows you to paste text from other sources such as a Microsoft Word document. Once that button is selected, you can paste information directly into the content box from your outside documents. The button with a rectangle that looks kind of like an eraser is used to clear all formatting options of the highlighted text. The Omega button, or upside down horseshoe as I like to call it, allows you to insert special characters into your text. We already talked about the next two buttons when we were talking about indenting bullet points. They can also be used to indent paragraphs. The arrows that curve to the left and the right allow you to undo and redo the changes you've made to your page. The question mark provides a guide on keyboard shortcuts you can use as you type instead of using these buttons. To add images, audio, video, or documents to the page, you can either drag them into your content box and drop them when it says drop files to upload, or you can click Add Media on the top left above your toolbar to select an item you have previously added to your media library. You can upload new files in the Add Media box as well. On the far right of the toolbar, there is a button called Distraction Free Writing, which removes all of the clutter from your screen so you can focus on writing great content. Hover your mouse up to the top of the page to view a basic toolbar or edit from distraction free writing. You can also hit the escape button on your keyboard to exit. You will notice there are two tabs, one called visual and one called text. Up until now I've been using the visual tab which allows you to modify the content like I just did without knowing any code or HTML. If you would like to edit the HTML directly or enter in custom code, Click on the text tab to view your page's HTML code. On the right side column, you'll see options for saving your page as a draft, previewing your page, scheduling your page to be published, or publishing your page immediately. You can make edits live on pages that have already been published by clicking the update button. The next section of the right column is page attributes. Parent allows you to make the page you are working on into a child page of another page you've already created. The child page will show up as a drop-down within your navigation. 
The template will change based on what theme you are using and will display your content with custom layouts or additional features. Pages are ordered alphabetically by default in your page list, but you can change the order in which they are displayed by entering a number in the box under Order. Featured image allows you to select an image that will show up as a thumbnail or on the top of your page, depending on how your theme is set up. Switching to preview this page, you can see how the featured image is utilized for this theme. The Screen Options button at the very top of the page allows you to toggle some more advanced options related to the functionality of the page. Custom Fields is used by various plugins and themes. Discussion allows you to toggle whether comments and trackbacks or pings are allowed. Slug allows you to change the slug of the page. Author allows you to change who is credited as publishing the page. You can also toggle whether you want the screen you're working on to have two columns or one column. Did you get all that? I know it was a lot and hope you learned about a new button or two you weren't already familiar with. Thanks for watching. If this video tutorial was helpful, please make sure to like it. Subscribe to this channel for more videos using WordPress.